And I'm Raga. And welcome to the Chick Lit Book Club podcast. Where we read a romance novel and then we talk about it. Today we're talking about And They Lived Happily Ever After by Therese Bihari. Yay. And we are sorry if we pronounced your name wrong. She seems like a lovely lady. She really does. Yes. <laughs> she really seems like just a lovely human. Yes. And when we get into the book, I almost wonder, having now seen her author's picture, I mm-hmm. kind of wonder if she wrote, if she, if she is like the, 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 the she put herself as the, as the heroine in this one. Oh, did you, so do you didn't read the acknowledgments? Wait, no. So there's a little bit, um, she says. Oh, at the, um, at the end? Yeah. At the acknowledgments no, at I the end, not. she talks mm-hmm. about, um. How uh, writing is an outlet for her, like Gaia, and uh, I was going through a particularly tough time in terms of anxiety then. So I wrote about a romance author who escaped into her books, made that part literal, and gave myself the freedom to imagine what life could be if I became the heroine in my own books. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't get the... I sometimes read it now. I'm just like, I just don't. happened Sorry, to, guys. for whatever reason, yeah. I don't necessarily always read them either. This time, I just happened to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, I- and then she also talks about, like, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit more, but she talks mm-hmm. about, um, she says it was a love letter to romance, the genre that brought me joy and hope during even the darkest of moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, I look at her and, like, she's got the, the corkscrew hair, like, uh-huh. the curls and stuff. Yeah. She's super adorable. She's adorable. Yeah. She's adorable. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to be talking about that a little bit today. I'm yeah, we excited. are. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> very excited. <laughs> so, so, so fun. <laughs> Much like such a bear coming. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I mean, I liked that meme so much. I bought one of them. Did you really? It's, well, it's Doge. Doge is it, that's you know doggy or whatever. It was like that. Mm, mm-hmm. So so internet. So wow. I mean, that's Luna. It really is. Yeah, she's a great dog. Yeah, she's. Yeah, I wish she would rub off on her brother. <sighs> <laughs> what you guys missed was my look of contempt toward my puppy. Aww. She's very cute. Love her it's... dearly. Peeing all over my house. <laughs> Makes you feel better. I mean, I got one that's he's se- going to be seven months, and he's still doing that. It's great. But he has Beautiful. no longer his balls, so... Hopefully that cuts that off. Snip them right off. Literally cuts literally that Literally off. cuts that out. Yep. Snip, snip, bitch. Snip, snip. Keep looking at him. Keep going, fucking five days, dude. Five days. <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing. I was laughing. I was like, I thought this was supposed to help. Maybe I'll just take it back. Is there something else you can cut off, please? <laughs> Is there something else you can cut off? Ay, ay, ay. Get a dog, you guys. It's super fun. Yeah. Super yeah, fun. Says it's great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Ray. Yes, ma'am. Tell me something good. Well, I found this, not found, I mean, I, okay, yes, I found it. Cause you found love in a hopeless place? I did. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that is, that happens all the time in our house where someone says something and then someone else, like, yeah. turns it into song lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> So it's um, just natural for me now. <laughs> so sorry. I'll remind me when we go on a break uh, a line that from <laughs> Halloween Eight today that okay. I laughed. I wrote it down. And I was like, I have to share this with you. I'm not going to share it on air. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. So I found uh, I've been watching a lot of docu series. Um. I watched one on Netflix that I fucking loved. It's called. Um... <laughs> I can't fucking remember because I'm old. Um, <laughs> oh, what the fuck is it called? It is about um, on the nose, <laughs> right? Right. It's called um, Ray is now forty. I'm going on forty two, and she can't remember shit. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to find it. Oh shit! It's uh, oh god. Um. Anyhow, it's it's about the um. God damn, I'm trying to find it really quick. Um, anyhow, it's about the uh, Hollywood and um, pretty much discrimination or of women in Hollywood for as many years. And um, this changes everything. That's what it's called. Oh, right, right, right. 
Because they kept saying, because it's actually, I did not know this. This is not my bright spot, but I, I still like feel I need to tell everybody about this this documentary because it's so fascinating. Because it's, Gina Davis has her own sort of like um, research, um, like inclusionary um, women's rights organization, uh, Gina Davis Institute on, on Gender and Media. That's what she's yeah. So she discovered in like I think she was like in 2012 that she was looking at and watching like she started noticing that in children's movies uh, and, and entertainment in general, there were not, there were very few leading female roles. Mm -hmm. So she actually paid, she, she went to Google and she said, I want this program that will review, will like, will go through and view all of this media. Mm -hmm. And I need, I need to, I need statistics. So two years worth of research where they spent it, like this, the program that Google came up with was it could, it could review uh, a piece of work in a minute. And so what they did, that's actually from her research is where we get the Bechtel test. Oh, where, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's like... Um, if, so if you don't know, the Bechtel test is um, uh, a test in literature or film that in which if you pass the test, two female characters have had a discussion that is not about men. Yeah. Or about men they're dating, like, yeah. or want to date, or whoever, romantic interests. You have a conversation that it has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. So, like, the fact that we are discussing bright spots in our days. Yeah. Quali that passes the test. Yeah, and it's amazing. They talk about some of the uh, movies that, that pass the Bechtel test, and it's kind of interesting. Um, but, so... What, what Gina Davis was saying, and the reason it's called This Changes Everything, is because when you think of something that like, comes out like Thumb and Louise, or mm -hmm. because, you know, obviously, um, but like Wonder Woman, is they're thinking, well, this changes everything. This will change everything. Right, yeah. And, but what's fascinating about it is the history of women in Hollywood is when, before we had sound, before it was just, you know, before talkies, women ran Hollywood. It was mostly a women-centric um, uh, outlet. Really? Because, yes. They were writers, producers, editors. They they directors. They did pretty much everything I didn't until know that. sound came into to the, to the uh, came into being into because, popularity because, because men because... like to hear their own voices. <laughs> nice, um, sort of. Um, is they needed, <laughs> they needed to start building production houses to, because they couldn't. Uh, they had to have you know they had to have sound booths and they had yeah. to have like yeah. actual sets. To be able to, to film on and yeah. to record on. So where did they go? They needed money. They went to banks. So the banks became... Right. So who ran the banks? Men. And women literally could not get loans. Yep. Up until yep. the 70s, by the way. Yep. And up... So when the... So shortly after you have, you have the, like, the unions come in. And the unions actually specifically made it, like, try to push women out. Like, that was their goal, was to push women out as much as possible by, like, you know, make, paying them less, not, someone not paying them at all, and really pretty much just pushing them out of Hollywood. So, anyhow, needless to say, This Changes Everything is a fantastic documentary. I would roll it, totally recommend it. What I am going to recommend, though, is my bright spot was I found Encore on Disney+. Plus, and if you've not watched it, it is fucking fantastic. It is I have not. produced by Kristen Bell. It is a like it was only like one season i don't know if they're going to bring it back probably maybe they, maybe yeah, because it's of covid they couldn't do it for the next last couple of years but what it is is they go into they they get together a cast from a high school like from, oh from a high school i remember that yeah Broadway i heard production. about this some of them are so rife with animosity it's so great like some of them i like one in particular one episode it was um andy get your gun in I can't remember where I want to say it was Florida, and this high school in Florida, and there was like so much animosity because it was like, and, but we're talking like twenty years ago, even even more than that, like, and there was still like this one woman was upset because the, the guy that she was dating was like the lead, and he was messing around with like, and, like kissing other girls, and they're all like, you kind of knew it, but it was just it was like so like it was cringy that like there was a couple times where I had to fast forward because I was like I can't watch this, it's making me uncomfortable. But the singing's awful. You know, it's just, it's a Perfect. whole, like, hurricane of awful wrapped up in a delightful. 
Um, so Wonderful. I would recommend um, one of the best ones I thought. One, the only one that she so so Kristen um, Bell comes on and, 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 and visits the set on one of them, um, and I have to say that was probably the best one. Um, probably because she's awesome. Yeah. So, so they do like a different more. musical in every episode, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what it looks like. Okay. Yeah, some of the um, Annie, Beauty and the Beast, Annie. Sound of Music, Grease, Annie Get Your Gun, uh, Oklahoma, Godspell, Fiddler on the Roof, Pippin, High School Musical, <laughs> Anything Goes, and Ragtime. I would say there's three that were really good. One was Fiddler on the Roof. The other one, the other two were um, uh, but, but Anything Goes and um, Ragtime. Anything goes was it was fantastic because we're talking like forty years, wow! Because it was like a nineteen seventy seventy five action, and it was they were just del- the the cast like the people they were just delightful like you wanted to be like, be you know you wanted to be friend like you meet meet these people they just seemed like just awesome people so yeah fun I would recommend yeah all right fair fair yeah sorry that I talked for about twenty minutes there oh, I just hit the table no you're fine. I don't think it was 20 minutes, but regardless, I think that's awesome. Cool. So, Veronica. Uh-huh. Tell us something good. Girl, you know exactly what I'm going to say. Listen, and you're just going to have to, like, tamp down your disinterest for this topic. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something when you finish that you're going to, like, you might quit the podcast. Anyhow, cool. First, you're going to let me finish? Yeah. Once well, you finish that, boom. Okay, so uh, I am unabashedly, at this juncture in my life, I'm a 36-year-old white lady, and I am not sorry to be a Swifty, okay? I'm just not. I am done done being ashamed that I am older than her, (laughs) and that I think her music is fucking awesome, okay? We're older than most people. (laughs) Shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Unless you're a man, and then you get to age... And still make money. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal, I hope you are living in a cabin with no internet this weekend because Taylor Swift eviscerated you. And she's not sorry about it. Anywho, listen. On Friday the 12th, Taylor Swift came out with her version of Red. And it is so fucking good. Like, it is just so, so fucking good. First of all, she, you can hear like from, <laughs> you can hear from her first, like her early stuff to now, how much her voice has improved, has matured, is different now than it was. And it's, she, you cannot deny, she is absolutely hands down one of the greatest songwriters of our time. So even if you don't think that like her music is good or that you don't like her voice, that's fine. But that girl, that woman, she's like 31 is extremely talented, at least in the songwriting department. I can't, like, I really expect to just be emotionally obliterated by Red. But really what happened was that, like, it was just really awesome for me to listen to it and know that, like, as a person who has, I'm very different than I was a decade ago. So is she. Like, she came out on the other side, you know, like that, that album was really about like heartbreak and just sadness. She also rolls around naked on her piles of money too. That's she deserves every goddamn penny though. She really does. You can, you can disagree with me, but I'm right. So I'm like, just, I'm just sitting here. I'm just sitting here. Cause I value my life. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. So at any rate, um, <laughs> I, I found it like cathartic to listen to it because She's in a better place now. I'm in a better place now. It's just, it was nice to be able to just, like, look back on the things that that were more uh, relevant at that period in my life and realize that those things are not relevant any longer. It's nice. Um, there is one song that, like, there's all sorts of jokes all over the internet about, like, women in their 30s being happily married with children and, like, falling apart listening to Taylor Swift's version of Red. Um, And really, I think that, like, the thing that no one in this position is talking about is the song Ronin, which is written about, like, if you have not listened, if you don't know what this song is about, it is about an actual existing, like, it's a true story. It's about a four-year-old who died. And so there, 
the four-year-old's mom is a co-writer on the song. So mm-hmm. she will get royalties forever because of mm-hmm. this song. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where it was released before. I had only heard it once before on Spotify. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I've never heard that before. And so I looked it up and I was like, oh, I'm never listening to that again. And then I saw that she put it on red and I was like, God damn it. So I have to skip through it. I cannot, I cannot listen to it. Yeah. Like if there is going to be a song that emotionally eviscerates women who are in their 30s who are married with children or just have children that song will be it i i cannot listen to it um the other awesome thing is the 10 minute version of all too well during which she just rips jake gyllenhaal to shreds and he deserves it like let's just be real about that she's pretty sure he's currently i mean because first of all he did not show up to her birthday party Okay. They were I mean, dating. Okay, so th- so because he didn't come to her birthday party, she feels the need to rip him apart in front of mi- you know, in front of millions of people. That seems like petty, really fucking petty. That seems like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Okay, mind you, she didn't just write the song. She wrote the song after he broke her heart. Like, I mean, come on. Like, it's that's okay. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. That just seems really ridiculous, but that's me. I mean, I I don't think I... Carly Simon did this many, many years ago. It's true. But we didn't... She didn't say, like, hey... What the fuck was his name? Um, James Taylor. James Taylor. Go fuck yourself. I mean... She didn't say that. No. We just I know mean, it's about Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't know. I just wonder, after so many of these songs that she writes for these different guys, I would stop by and be like, is it me? That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I, again, I value my life, so I'm just going to stop right there. Just stop it's a right good there. call. It's a good call. <laughs> Are we still friends? <laughs> Are we still friends? Okay. Um, I drank way too much wine and um, watched the <laughs> short film that accompanied the 10-minute ver- ten version of All Too Well. It was excellent. So did you buy it? Did you purchase it? Okay, so I purchased the digital copy online mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. from Taylor's website. And then also, as you know, my husband has the hookup at his job. So he brought home, um, he understood the assignment. I told him, <laughs> I was like, I said, I cannot stress enough the importance that you bring home Red Taylor's version, a CD, on Friday. So he did come home with it, which is good. Um, also, like, there's... He's like, I don't want to sleep on the couch or be dead. So. Yeah. Um, he, I opened it, like, in front of him, and he was like, oh, my God, it's two discs. And I was like, yes, there's 30 songs on it. Yeah. The vinyl is four records. Four. So that's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of vinyl. It is a lot of vinyl. He was like, I didn't think you'd want it. And I was like... Do you, do you, do you, well, yeah, you guys have vinyl. We have a a record player and we have a Mm -hmm. lot of vinyl. Um, so I was like, I don't understand why you thought I wouldn't want it. And he was like, well, because you can't play vinyl in the car. And I was like, that's fair. (laughs) But I'm just saying I would not be sad if you brought home vinyl of this record because vinyl is my favorite. So are you best sound? Are you getting it for Christmas? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe you should text Mr. Veronica and be like, yo. <laughs> Just a heads up. Just I a heads you. up. This I have it be. on good authority. <laughs> nice. Anywho, um, that is my bright spot. I have very much enjoyed that. Right. It's, I like seeing, um, I like seeing how she's changed enough, but not, but mm-hmm. like, it has to be close enough that she, the entire point of this is that she is creating obsolete her old recordings. I don't, I'm going to explain this. You probably no, don't. No, I had to look it up because I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's happening. Yeah, yeah. So the reason she's doing this is because her, I don't remember what Scott Borchetta was to her, like a manager or like he was the person who like signed her initially. And then he ended up selling her entire catalog along with many others. It wasn't just hers, but he sold everything to someone who had bullied her. And his name is Scooter Braun and he's a fucking asshole. Oh yeah. The guy, Kesha guy. Yeah. No, that's Dr. Luke. Oh, okay. He, Dr. Luke assaulted Kesha. Um, but Scooter Braun is Justin Bieber's manager and, um, they just, they had had, 
Right. They had just, Scott Borchetta had been like her manager or whoever long enough to know that like she and Scooter Braun did not get along and that Scooter Braun was like a bully to her. And he still sold all of his shit to her or all of her shit to to him. And she begged for the opportunity to buy her masters so that Scooter Braun did not own them. Mm-hmm. And instead, what they said to her was, you can earn them back for every record you put out. You can earn one back. And she was like, no, like, no, I am now that puts me in a longer contract with you. Mm hmm. So she chose not to. Lover was the first record that she put out that she fully owned. Mm. So everything she's doing now, she fully owns. And as of, I think it was November 2019, it was around the time Lover came out, she was allowed to re-record the first five of her records. So um, everything through 1989... And then, but she doesn't have, she might have reputation now, but she did not at the time. There was another, I think it was like another year or something. So she might have the rights to reputation now, but she did not at the time. So she can re-record everything. And like, actually Kelly Clarkson tweeted about it. Kelly Clarkson was like, you know what you should do? You should re-record all your shit. I will buy every single album. So that's what she's doing. And I love that she's, she's taking back ownership of her work, her work Mm -hmm. that has made those people, millions of fucking dollars. Well, look at what happened with the fucking Beatles. I mean, that's the same thing that happened with them, you know? Yeah. Like, Who owns that stuff now? Michael Jackson well, did for a while. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think... Um, I thought Paul McCartney got it back. I think so. Uh, although, I think... Possibly. Does Capital still exist? Yeah, they do. Because I think they might own it for some strange reason. I think Capital does. I don't know. I, uh, all I know is I just still remember Paul McCartney doing that <laughs> imitation of Michael Jackson buying his stuff. It's not, it's not, bus- it's, it's just business. It's just business. And my, Paul's like, yeah, but it's my work, dude. Yeah, it's literally my life's work. Right. Literally Thanks. my life's work. Thanks. And mind you, like, Taylor Swift was signed when she was a teenager. So it is literally, mm-hmm. she's 31 now. Mm-hmm. This is literally her life's work. 32. Yeah. 32. Literally her life's work. Half of her life has her. been has been spent doing this. So she's finally taking control back of her work and her career. And it's it's beautiful to see. I can't wait for for the rest of them, really. But Red, I was really looking forward to Red. So. Oh, good. good Anywho, I just talked for 20 minutes about Taylor Swift. Well, I guess this is the point where I tell you that my Spotify set up to never play Taylor Swift. That's fine. <laughs> it literally goes... I'm sorry, you have to you have to give us a p- approval to go out and play this song. And I'm like, it's okay. It's okay, I play enough for the both of us. That's a, I, somebody's listening to it. Yeah, Anywho. lots of people are. It's actually number one. Most of her stuff is number one on Spotify, with the exception Boom. of, like, one Bruno Mars song. Like, the top 30 songs being played are all hers, except for one Bruno Mars song. Who's stuff that I can't find anymore? That they, I, that, I don't know. Anyhow. I got a deck of cards sitting here. <gasps> Read me a card. All right. I'm going to pick one. So, again, real, 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 real quick recap. I got a freak deck of cards from Adam and Eve at the real Adam and Eve. Sponsor and, us. Sponsor us, please. Um, and, unfortunately, last week's card, we found an error. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the card. I'm also going to look it up to make sure it's, it's a good the idea. fucking correct thing. Because we were lied to. We were lied to. We even consulted Mr. Veronica. Yeah, poor Mr. Veronica. Um, referee. Referee. Um, a card. Okay, so what we do is we pick a card. It's a, it's a uh, year of sex positions cards. And they are, depending on hotness or difficulty, depending on what you want, um, the, that's the, there's a thermometer range on um, on the card. So I pick a card at random, and we talk about it, and we decide if there's any um, any book that features <laughs> this sexual position. So yep. today's card, oh, possibly. <laughs> and usually by the end, I have to draw something on it because we're trying yeah, to figure out. Yeah, I think out, every card has had some sort of accompanying drawing. I don't have to have a drawing on this one. Okay. Although I can't. Okay. So it's called a sea turtle. What the fuck? <laughs> so it's a two out of five. Okay. Technique. She curls her legs up and he enters her from a kneeling position. Using a pillow to raise her lower back allows him to easily stimulate her G-spot 
while he can keep a hand free to caress other areas of her body. Meaning the clit. Meaning the clit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can you see? No. Damn. That's the only thing. I do have a... Um, here, I'm going to take a picture and send it to you. It's called a sea um, turtle? It's called a sea turtle. Um, the other thing that we found out that is not necessarily... These are not the, necessarily the names of... Because it's supposed to be the Kama Sutra, but it's right, really Right, so I'm not. seeing something that says, like, turtle, but not sea turtle. Um... Okay, sending it. Good Lord, are my neighbors home? Holy shit. <laughs> okay. There you go. I'm sending it over to you. Okay. Um, I can't Good think Lord. of anything. Um, any any book that has this position off the top of my head. Um, okay, I yeah, was... so the turtle that I saw is not this. Okay. Do you still have that website I sent you last time? Uh, I assume this is where I've ended up. Hang on, no. we're with just the, sending uh, each other porn. Yeah, with the um, the cartoon drawings. Yep. Yep. Oh lord. Um. um see, this is different. Of, it's sort of. It's it's like she's flipped around. Right. Like the one on this website is rear entry. This one is not. The sea turtle. Um. I just see turtle facts. Oh my god. <laughs> see turtle uh, facts. Yeah, so it just looks like, yeah, I'd only see, um, <laughs> I only see, see, turtle sex, not, um. Oh my god. There's a ton of that online. Um, oh, there is, wait, hold on, did you find one? Oh, I, nope, I just found porn. Oh, yep, oh, there you wow, go. Oh wow, this is, no, this is different. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> There's oh, lots of pop-ups now. Lots oh, of pop-ups. No. no. <laughs> yeah, uh. I um I, I I think it's probably right. I mean, it's probably not right, but I I'm sure they've just renamed it something, but I don't think I can't think of a book that has this in it. I can't. I can't either. I mean, other than like the thing is it's very similar to pretty, pretty much a, a lot of sex. Yeah, like it's similar to just putting a pillow under your lower back. And pulling your knees up. Yep. Right, yeah. So like yep. it's not... Um, I mean, it could be... I, I'm sure we've all read a romance novel where somebody has pulled their... The, the hero has pulled the heroine's knees up to his shoulders or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar. Yeah. Except her knees are, her knees are bent. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. They do give. I mean, each card has the they. It's different nationality or different ethnicity. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Should we send this to French Brutus? <laughs> Be like, hey, can you put this on your Twitter? Request. Do you <laughs> accept requests? <laughs> so we we discovered last weekend that French Brutus, who is our favorite porn star? Question mark. Question mark. Pro, semi professional porn star. Porn star in the making. Um, he has a tw he has Twitter, and he just posts porn. And we're like, how do you get a how does Jack allow you to do this? I don't like, know. He's he's getting it's a very explicit. I mean, it's yeah, not. Yeah, he's definitely getting a blowjob. He's giving he's giving going down south on a number of ladies. He's fucking just pound. He's jackhammering somebody. Okay. It's it's Thanks very explicit. I was surprised. Yeah. I was very surprised. I mean, neither of us was sorry about it. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not at all sorry. But like, I was surprised. That's all I'm saying. I I still do enjoy the mustache. It's like a naughty, naughty Ted Lasso. And I'm, I don't. It's personal preference. It's, it's oh, you haven't gotten to Led Tasso, have you? Mm -mm. The episode with Led Tasso. Okay. No. I'm not gonna ruin it. Don't ruin, ruin it. it. I won't. Barbecue sauce. Um. So, I guess we should talk about the book. We probably should, because that's right, the purpose of the podcast, I guess. While we're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, we're going to be back in two and two. <laughs> Let's take a brief respite. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find the place okay? Sorry, it's kind of loud for a Saturday morning. Yeah, it's fine. Um, why are we at the park, though? Well, I wanted to start running drills. 
drills. Yeah, like one-on-one -on -one passing? Like soccer? Yes! We need to hone them schools! <laughs> Season's half over! <laughs> Wait, what is happening? I figured we need to get in football shape for our new Ted Lasso podcast. Okay, to be fair, it will take more than just this to get us in football shape. Uh, also, I have a lot of questions. Uh, best way to understand the sport is to live it, right? <gasps> Jason can use that in season three. Okay, legitimately, that's a really good line. Uh, but okay. right, we don't have time to start an offshoot podcast, and no one has time to edit it. But but that's the great thing about Anchor.fm. Anchor will do all of that for us in one little place, like our old little coach beard. <laughs> I know. That is one of the best things about Anchor. It's free, and the built-in tools allow us to record and edit your podcast right from your phone. Plus, they'll distribute it to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you know, so many of the other podcasting platforms. Wait, how good is your Roy Kent impression? Why would I be doing a Roy Kent impression? I've been working on mine. You want to hear it? <gasps> no, there's kids everywhere. Little ears don't need to hear the F word this early. So we're not doing this? No, honey. Yeah. What am I going to do with all these soccer balls and goldfish? I don't even want to know why you have actual goldfish. To visualize being a goldfish. <sighs> Will you take half of them? I, I can't guarantee my kid's not going to kill him, but yeah, okay. We're doing this. I believe we are not doing this. Oh, I believe we are. No, but we're not, though. Be curious, not judgmental. Right, I'm not being judgmental. I'm being realistic. Come on. It's a great... Uh, it's Barbecue a great idea. Sauce! Oh, we don't have time. We just don't have time. Onward. You're starting... Onward. No, you're starting a horror movie podcast with Charlotte. We don't have time. I believe and believe. Oh, God. And we're back. We're back, bitches. Welcome. Welcome. <sighs> um, do you want to read the, or do you want me to read sure, it? Sure, I can read it. Uh -huh. um, I, again, have a lovely cold, courtesy of my toddler. So, if you'll excuse sexy. me, I have a um, cough drop in my mouth. Um, <clears throat> it's really just a lovely experience. I'm sure okay. the cough drop tastes good with the wine, too. Yeah, I'm taking a break from the wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a mixture. It's like toothpaste and orange juice. Ugh, that is the worst. Like, mint with orange is just the worst. Why? Yeah. Why? I don't know. It's horrible. Because chocolate with orange is not bad. Right. But mint with orange is, like, gag-worthy. I know. I feel like it's a universal truth. Does Besides everyone that every, that? every young woman is one. That every, every young woman... <laughs> <laughs> no, every every man is in need of a wife. That's what I mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Ridiculous. Okay, so uh, I shall read um, the description for And They Lived Happily Ever After, a magical Own Voices rom-com. Um, for Own Voices, that's a, a category in which the... Is it... Does that indicate that the author shares some sort of experience with one of the characters, probably the female protagonist? I think so. Like how, um, there was one other one that we read that was in Known Voices, or was it something um, we recommended? I Own Voices remember. means that if you are rating a main character who is part of a marginalized group, you are part of that marginalized group. Oh, perfect. Okay, so, um, she is, Therese Bahari is from South Africa. Mm-hmm. And is writing her... This takes place in Cape Cod. Um, I'm sorry. Nope. Cape Town. <laughs> Good job, Veronica. Cape <laughs> Town. Wow. Yes. yes. So sorry. Um, takes place in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, okay. Quite um, a different book if it was Cape, Cape Cod, wouldn't it? It really would have been different. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you could do this in Salem, though. We could. Ooh, that would be fun. Yeah. That would be fun, too. Okay. All right. <clears throat> One unexpected kiss. Successful romance author Gaia Anders has a secret. Anything she dreams at night is magically written into her best-selling novels. 
After a lonely childhood in foster care, her dream life is the only one she trusts. Gaia's waking life just can't compare until she gets caught in one utterly surprising, crazy passionate, real life kiss. One near perfect guy. Workaholic businessman Jacob Scott has had a crush on his brother's best friend Gaia since forever, but he never expected to literally share her dreams. Living out their magical nighttime fantasies is explosive, but it's their waking desire turned his signal, turning his single-minded ways upside down. It's making him want a future he didn't think was possible. One dream that could come true. But Gaia has secrets from her past she won't reveal, and Jacob's attempts to keep the peace in his own fractured family puts him up against her deepest fears. Soon, they're facing hard truths about who they are and what they're running from. And the only way to break this curse is realizing true love's real life power. Um, do you think we need to add anything more in here? <sighs> um, we should probably talk about how, because it's, it's kind of vague as to what the magic entails. Yeah. So the magic is um, that, all right, so Gaia is a writer. As the description said, uh, whatever she writes ends up in her dreams that night. However, what she dreams, if it changes, it also changes on the page that she wrote. Mm -hmm. So let's say like she writes a scene about um, a princess and a bodyguard and like him following her around all day going about her, you know, whatever business she will then dream that and if anything changes in the dream let's say jacob shows up in the dream jacob will then show up on the page Mm -hmm. well what has happened is that jacob is dreaming these dreams these exact dreams that she is having they are having dreams together and it starts the night that they kiss yeah she actually, she refers to it as almost like a magical STD at one point. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that's a central, it's a central plot point in the story. It's, mm-hmm. it's discussed at length. Um, it's stressful for both of them because mm-hmm. it's never happened to either of them before freaks Jake about quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, another thing that I think is important to understand is that Gaia does not realize that she has anxiety. Right. Until right. very late in the book. She just doesn't know. And a lot of that has to do with the fact she doesn't have a support system. Like, not really. She didn't, she grew up in foster care. She was never adopted. She aged out of foster care. So she doesn't have anyone like on her side. Her best friend is Seth, who is Jake's brother. Mm -hmm. Um, But she doesn't have like a big group of friends. It's basically Seth. And that's about it. And really, she became friends with Seth after um, he was dating her roommate in college. And then she stayed friends with him, mm-hmm. but not with the roommate. Right. So, um. Because that's how we open the book. Right. We open the book as, as her 18 year old self, and she starts right. to experience that. Right. 18. Right. She didn't discover that, like, magic or that power until her 18th birthday. Because she buys a, a notebook. A notebook, right. To start to, like, journal almost, or to start to, like, actually write. And, mm hmm. Yeah. Right, and she's she's written a lot of novels. She has many published novels. Yeah, these so, are like twenty five, right? Was that what it was? Twenty five or thirty? It's a lot. Something. Mm-hmm. Um, over like a period of a decade or so. So, right. um, it's they're quick. Like she's she's pumping them out basically. Um, but yeah, then she meets Jacob, and then all of a sudden, it, it, well, let's be clear, she knew him before like when he was a kid because she has mm-hmm. known seth for like a decade or whatever right. right um but he was a minor at the time and that's how she looked at him like the first thing she when he <laughs> appears like they're meet cute or whatever is really funny because he comes she's like hiding because she 
again, has anxiety that she is not recognizing as having anxiety. She doesn't enjoy being in social situations. So she's essentially at a party at Seth's house hiding from the party. She goes into his room to just seek quiet and privacy. She literally brought a book to read. Yeah. Which is the most me me thing I've ever heard. (laughs) So she goes to hide in Seth's room. And Jacob, like, walks out of the bathroom in, like, a very McSteamy fashion on Grey's Anatomy, where, like, Eric Dane just comes out of the bathroom (laughs) in a towel. There's a whole thing on that that this changes everything about Grey's Anatomy and how it changed the the, the spectrum of things. Oh. We talked to Shonda a lot. Anyhow, go on. Shonda is, is brilliant slash evil. Um, okay, sorry. So, uh, at any rate, he comes out of the bathroom, like, looking hot. Mm-hmm. And she says to him, like, what are you doing? She's like, first of all, Jacob, like, oh, holy shit. And then it's like, you are a child. Like, she turns around yeah. because she, yeah. in she her mind, seen him in- she hasn't seen him in years. Like, the yeah. last time she saw him, he was literally a minor. And so, you know, she's just like, oh, my God, this is Seth's brother and he is a child. And I like, please put a shirt on. Mm -hmm. Please get dressed. And um, then she looks at him and is like, oh, he is. There is nothing about him that is a child. First of all, they're only two years apart. She's like 30 or 31 or something. And so he's like, Mm -hmm. so he's like 20. I mean, neither of them are children. No. But she looks he at him. He says that. He goes, I'm two years younger than you. I'm two years you. younger than you. There is, there is a lot of, like, funny old age jokes, though. Because like, well, at the, the same time, like, the last laugh. time she saw him, I think she said he had braces. So, like. Oh, my God. That is so funny. Those yeah. braces did you good. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And she's so what? awkward. She's so yeah. awkward. Like the things mm-hmm. that she says, you're just like, oh, it's so cringeworthy. It's so mm-hmm. cringeworthy. Mm-hmm. But again, she's socially awkward. So yeah, she has anxiety. So yes, she's going to be like, socially awkward. Mm-hmm. He's just as kind of socially awkward to a point himself. Like not really, but like he's he kind he's of not is... as outgoing as she thinks. No, he is. He, she's he like, is. look at you. Yeah, you look like an Adonis, and like so yeah. you must be. You know, she assumes he's like a player that he dates around a lot and stuff, but that that's not. He's a workaholic. No. He has not he's, dated yeah. seriously in the last eight years. Yeah, his family own a branding company, and so his his father cannot run the company anymore. So he's kind of taken over, and Seth is pieced out. He doesn't have anything to do with the company, so he is mm-hmm. like the one who has to run it. Yeah, and because uh, his this father, like you learn, had a breakdown. Pretty much mm-hmm. is why he's not heading it up anymore, and so. Um, and I don't necessarily, and it's, you know, I, I, and we learn that, you know, S- Jacob's not necessarily, like, in love with his job or doing what he's doing. Right. And um, and there's a really bad relationship between um, his brother with Seth and his father. Mm-hmm. So he feels like he's always the intermediary between the two. Yeah. Because he lives with his father to take care yeah. of him. Right. So I think that's probably, I mean, we could get it, but I don't really want to get into Gemma because no. she doesn't show up until like more than halfway through. Yeah. And I, I, I don't necessarily think it has anything really, really much, em- you know, um, emphasis on the plot or. This Not with what you or. and I are going to be yeah. talking about. I don't think so. No. I mean, but she'll be the second book, but like yeah. or the next book in the series or whatever. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, my dear, why don't you give me... So, this is the part where we talk about this. Uh, we do a compliment sandwich. So, we start with something that we really liked, and we end with something we really liked. In the middle, we talk of the meat is something maybe um, we didn't so much care for as much. Um, so, um, well, give me your top button, please. Okay. So, um, if you look at our Instagram, you will see that the two of us um, immediately loved the author... Because of literally the dedication. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, you know, at the beginning, so this, I'll just read the dedication. Thanks. For my babies, you've babies. brought more joy and love to my world than I could ever imagine. For my husband, because I've never been anxious about you. And for every person struggling with an anxiety disorder, I see you. Um, I literally just texted you and was like, um, I am already in love with this author. Like, just the dedication. All I knew was to read the dedication, <laughs> and I already love her. Um, 
for her babies, literally talking about her babies. She was pregnant yeah. with twins and like gave birth to twins while she was writing and editing this book. Um, so at any rate, um, my top pun is about the anxiety discussion. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a character who does not realize she has anxiety. Right. right. For a significant portion of the book. But as a person with anxiety, I was like, girl, you have anxiety. <laughs> right. Like, In fact, like, I took an anxiety pill before we started because I knew we were going to talk about anxiety. And therefore, it will make you more anxious. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I completely understand. Um, how I mean, it is so late that she realizes she has anxiety. And it's really because Jacob is like, you're having panic attacks. That's what yeah. you're, this is what's happening. Because there's a point in the book where she's like, she she plays it. She does a disappearing act where they don't see it for for a week. She and that happens a, a couple week. times where like yeah. they just don't talk for a couple yeah. weeks or but so. He's extremely worried about her because she doesn't answer her phone. She won't answer the door, and mm-hmm. she's just sleeping. And she doesn't understand that that's yeah. You're 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 going into a, like a depressive depression. Like yeah. you're going you're you're yeah. Yep. Yep. Um. She, you, he, you read a lot of descriptions about how her anxiety is manifesting, but again, she doesn't know that that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And so she just like has trouble breathing and breaks down into sobbing fits and like feels like her chest is going to cave in on itself. Yeah. Um, so at one point, um, it says, this is really at the end of the book when she's learning, like she's finally figured out what's going on. She had done a lot of a reading on anxiety. At first, it was intimidating. Anxiety disorder is a mental illness. If she admitted to having a disorder, she would be admitting to being mentally ill. There's nothing wrong with being mentally ill. She knew that deep in her core and would go to battle with anyone who would say otherwise. But it was different accepting that she was mentally ill. Besides, it was such a weird concept. Or was the weird part now that she had a name for it? For those things that her body went through, the way she struggled to breathe sometimes, the rapid beating of her heart at the slightest discomfort, how her brain went on and on and on like a hamster wheel. Um, there's another one towards the beginning um, where it was very much like it, it hit me going, yeah, yeah, yeah this is what I experienced constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a long silence, slowly, insidiously. Tension took hold of her lungs. They were burning before she realized she was holding her breath. She exhaled, trying to make it seem as innocent as possible. After a quick inhale, she decided that silence was enough. Um, Yeah, I mean, you can't, you don't put a word, you don't have a word for it at the time. Mm -hmm. You just think, oh, well, you know, I'm just like, it's just, it's just a little bit, like she says tension. No, it's more than that. But you don't realize until you're in it. Like until you're on the other, I should say not until you're in it, until you're on the other side of it. Yeah. And for me, naming it, like having a name mm-hmm. or a physical or like a diagnosis that I could say like, oh, this is my anxiety. That helped me learn better coping mechanisms for it. Um, I remember at one point, like I was talking to my therapist, I was in session with my therapist and I had done a lot of reading about anxiety and I was like, do you think I have anxiety? And she just looked at me. <laughs> Did she say, did she say doy? (laughs) Basically, like that's what her face said to me. And she goes, yes, that's what I have you diagnosed as, is having general general anxiety disorder. And I was like, okay. Thanks. (laughs) She she kind of had this look on her face like, yeah, I assumed that you had gathered that. You know, (laughs) this is, we talk about your anxiety a lot. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We just... But you Never, what, like, though? named it, you know? And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, these are things that I could do that would... It helped my brain be able to process it better, to understand. Yeah. And in the in the years since we've had that discussion, for me, knowing, like, okay, this... My brain, that, that hamster on a wheel analogy is what my anxiety feels like. I don't sleep mm-hmm. well, I think in large part because of my anxiety. Um... I feel like, I told my mom this years ago, that I feel like when I go to sleep at night, my body is trying to rest, but my mind is just, like, going and going and going and going. And I can't stop it. Like, I mean, I'm I'm asleep. How am I supposed to stop it? I can't interrupt the thought pattern. I'm fucking asleep. Yeah. 
So I I never feel rested when I wake up in the morning. I mean, I just don't. I never do. Ne- literally never. It doesn't matter how much I sleep. And I feel like it's because my brain just keeps going. Oh, I, I have an issue where um, I, I can't turn my brain off. Oh, yeah. Same. Cannot. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I took... Um, I took a, I've taken Myers-Briggs before. I'm sure you have too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I had to do it for my, uh, my graduate work. Mm-hmm. And, but so it'd been 20 years so since I've taken yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, my boss asked me to take it or mm. she wanted me to take it again because she knows she likes to know everyone's Myers-Briggs so she can sure. manage people. Yeah. And so it was completely different. Was it really? I, oh yeah. But then it makes me think it's like not completely, but it was pretty different. And part of me thinks it's like you just you grow with experiences, so it, it shapes yeah. and colors what you mm-hmm. know what your personality is like, or what just in generally like, yeah, what's important to you. Come to find out, like one of my you know uh, I'm an architect, so um, it's an INTG TJ, mm. okay. and so one of them is overly critical. Oh, shocking. Shocker, okay, right? wow. Yeah, and um, <laughs> well, <laughs> one's romantically clueless, so, so I was like, yep. I mean, it was like. <laughs> So, so, um, I mean, but a lot of it is being extremely critical, overanalyzing, literally. And that's part of the, yep. actually, part of the romantic cluelessness was actually, like, overanalyzing oh, sure. every situation. Yeah. I totally um, believe that. Competitive. Shocker, right? What? Um, I know. I don't like to start fights on the internet. Kidding. I'm just... <laughs> um, and, but, yeah, so it's, like, one of those... It, I realized afterwards, I would assume that people with this, with this INTJ probably are very anxiety ridden because you probably. tend to overanalyze everything and you're extremely critical. But mm-hmm. it wasn't until like, I mean, for the longest time, talking about relationships, I always said for the longest time, we would overanalyze literally every interaction with somebody, with, sure, with, yeah. a, with a romantic person. It was like, what do you think he meant by that? It was like. Just fucking go with it. Like it, right. now, I mean, I'm, I'm of course the abs- absolute opposite now, where I'm like, I'm so disinterested that I'm like, I don't fucking care. But right. also, that's being forty. But on the <laughs> other hand, like I was forty until it was. I was until I turned forty was when I realized I had an anxiety disorder. Yeah. Not knowing that this whole like you know over analyzing everything, over you know being hypercritical, was an anxiety disorder. Like you know. Right. Well, know. because this is normal to you, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it's normal to me to overanalyze everything. It's normal for me to be exhausted because my brain never stops. It's And and like Therese, like Gaia, I find a lot of, of comfort in writing. Like, it yeah. helps me get things out of my head. It's almost like, um, it's almost like cleaning my brain, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it just gets the words that are running around constantly in my brain out and yeah. into a different medium. Mm-hmm. So that at the very least, I'm not the only one burdened by them. Right. Which maybe sounds mean, but like, it just is what it is. Um, there's a moment where um, they're finally talking about like what's going on. Mm-hmm. Jake, Jake has shown up at her place because she's gone completely MIA, has turned her phone off. No one can reach her. Off the grid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he shows up and he's like, we've got to talk about this. Like you... Mm-hmm. This thing is happening, like, I'm showing up in your dreams, and it's, like, I'm dreaming the things that you're dreaming slash writing. And he is basically like, can you just not, can you just not write? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so she says, you're asking me to not write. He gave a tight nod. She angled her head. You said Seth called you a workaholic. What does that have to do with this? You work a lot. She said as if he did, as if he hadn't interrupted, but you don't enjoy what you do. She ignored his surprise. If you did, you would understand when, what happens when you enjoy what you do. You want to do it. With me, there's more. I have to do it. If I don't write, my brain, it doesn't like me not writing. It was the simplest explanation for the compulsion she felt when she wasn't writing. And if I don't write, I'm thinking about writing. Even in the past week when I couldn't get out of bed, I was thinking about writing. When you feel that way about something, Jake, you don't not do it. Yeah. And I very much feel that way about writing. I have to do it. I mean, even when I'm not th- even when I'm not writing, if I'm in the middle of doing something else, I'm in line waiting at the store, I'm thinking about writing. Mm-hmm. If if I'm not thinking about people around me who are not wearing masks. 
<laughs> like generally I'm thinking about writing. If you have any questions about what I'm thinking about, I'm probably thinking about writing. I just, mm-hmm. that's how I am. Um, so I really, I, I get, that's my top one. I really felt connected to, to Gaia's anxiety and how she copes with her anxiety. Even when she didn't know what to call it, she was coping with it in a way that was healthy for her. Obviously, she had to make some adjustments to that. Um, but that was the only way she was able to figure out how to cope with her anxiety was to write. Did, did you notice the one um, callback, not callback, but parallel to boyfriend material that happened in the book? Tell me. <clears throat> fine, she managed to say. I'm fine. I Pure determination had her clearing her throat, turning around, plastering a smile on her face. I'll check for you, okay? I, if I have something, I mean... She walked past him, ignoring his weak call after her. Instead of going to her bedroom, though, she went to her bathroom. Oh, it was the yes. only door in her home, home with a lock. She locked it and caught the sob before it could come. She closed her eyes, pressed a hand to her chest, and told herself to breathe. But she was breathing in the steam from which Jake had showered, and somehow, despite using her soap or shampoo, she could still smell him. That unique Jacob scent that made her knees weak and smelled so much better than what she had created for Chris. She put the water on for the next, the shower in time to hide the sound of her next sob, but she wasn't sure if it was a sob. It sounded more like a catching of the breath she'd lost. She sucked in another and another, and when it didn't help, she stripped off her clothes and stood under the water. It gave her something else to think about. She focused on her, the water hitting her skin, the steady stream of it beating against her body. The air she let in her lungs was filled with steam, but it didn't add to the panic in the way, same way it had earlier. Slowly, she reached out for her soap, and then that didn't kill her. She began to wash herself. The steady movement and routine of it calmed her mind, had her heart slowing down, and finally she could think through the last 15 minutes. It just reminded me because I know of, of Luke yeah. going into the bathroom. I mean, he does yep. a couple times, so. He does, a yeah. couple times. Yeah. Um, I actually know people who the only way they can calm down from a panic attack is by standing in the shower. For whatever reason, that's the thing that does it for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know bring it back to reality a little bit yeah i mean they say that if you i think truly in something that works for me too if i'm like in the amidst an anxiety attack or something like that um they they recommend like the five four three two one technique you like mm-hmm. five things you can see four things you can hear mm-hmm. three things you can smell like things like that they um, do that on um the sleepless in Sic- sicily she yes it's it's mm-hmm. ground it's called grounding to yeah. to bring yourself back to concrete reality. Mm-hmm. I can see my green coat. I can see the dog sleeping in her in her crate. You know, things mm-hmm. like bringing yourself back to where you are stops the thought processes and like the spiral. Mm-hmm. Um it it just helps take you out of it. It doesn't work for everyone, but it that definitely helps me. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is your top bun, darling? Mine is the magical realism. Um, we've talked about magical realism before. I mean, in this like water it's for n- chocolate. Yeah, exactly. I, we, we don't have as much of it in here. I mean, I'm using magical realism and a very loose term um, because it is taken as rote almost that this magic is real and mm-hmm. that um, she is um, Gaia is doing it. Her- doing it herself she is self-actualizing the magic um i found a really great article a really great thesis actually um about magical realism in south africa after apartheid and how it uh and i won't go into it's a very 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 verbose and dense and a very fantastic um uh work but um i do like their um kind of like a not a definition but like um mm-hmm. the embrace this is actually in, reg- re- in regards to Caribbe- uh, caribbean li- literature but um it's like recognizing magical realism as a narrative mode um like in 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 writing um it's this author um david uh Mikus says magical realize realize yeah realism realizes the conjunction of ordinary and fantastic by focusing on a particular historical moment afflicted or graced by this doubleness. Since magical realism surrounds with its fabulous aura a particular historical resonant time and place, the theory of magical realism must apply an approach to history, not merely literature, literary genre. So in essence, I think what has happened, why she suddenly starts to get this 
magic when she turns 18 is because she has now become an adult. She has um, kind of self-actualized this thought that she now is the one who takes care of herself, like for good. And she um, has this ability now to path, you know, forge her own path. So this magic that she's using is making her life, it, it's, she's finding it's, 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 it's changing and constricting, not constricting, it's constructing, I should say, her, her real reality that she's, she's living. So it's not only does she create this story, but then by dreaming it, she makes it real. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, yeah. um, there's something to be said. It's not just like magic, like waving a wand, like Harry Potter. This is right. like something that is coming naturally from her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really interesting that like they said, like he says, like it's something historical. So for her, it's the momentous occasion of becoming an adult. Mm -hmm. Hitting that 18 yeah. for most people think that is an adult. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's like it was triggered by this foray into adulthood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the way the characters treat this magic, like there's a whole, st you know, a whole point which kind of goes into my other pro so i'm not really gonna t touch on it too much but um where gaia confesses to jacob this is what's happening i can't hit you can't freak out you had the promise to stay i'm going to tell you the story and why yeah. this magic she happening. makes him promise not to leave and and he takes it extremely well i think for someone to be coming up to that i'm in love with and saying so i've got magic guys like yeah I'd be like, so ah. about this yeah mm -hmm. yeah and and while I don't know if he 100% believes it at first, but I mean, it's kind of hard not to believe it because you're having the same fucking dream right. as, and, and things that she has said to you in the dream, she's, she references in real life, like real right. waking That's life. That's the thing that like, yeah, absolutely drives him over the edge is that he's, that she says in the dream, like, just give me a week. week. Mm -hmm. And then in real life, she says to him, I thought I told you I wanted a week. Yeah. Yeah. Roots right there. That is the magical realism. That is the you're you're taking that step from this dreamlike, right? You know, state into reality. So whatever you're dreaming is becoming real. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, there's something charming about that. I mean, there's something where it's not like it's not ever present to the whole novel where it's the driving force. There's a you know there's a uh, you know a whole lists of spells and incantations this person has to use it just it happens naturally mm -hmm. and it's nothing that she has to learn from like she's never right. like you know like uh, the book I, I recommended last time where she finds out that she's a fairy and she's got to learn all this stuff about the fairy world she doesn't have to it's just something right. that's natural and it's there and it makes sense in her life right it just started happening it just started happening yeah so there's uh, very charming, and I think it, it, it blends really well into the story. It, it lends well to uh, to the narrative, I think. Yeah, and I actually really liked the way that um, eventually Jake sort of, like, accepts it and embraces it as best he can. Mm -hmm. And at one point really leans hard into it. Mm -hmm. um, to the To an extent where it, like causes issues between the two of them. Yeah. But I feel like, and at the end, I mean, even when she is trying to like, there's something that she really wants to tell him. And she's like, it, this would have been so much easier if I just would have told you in a dream, but I know I needed to tell you in person. Well, and in, 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 in magical realism in South Africa, and, and magic in general has it's very similar it has the same trajectory as to magic and witchcraft and everything in america so mm -hmm. i mean and because you know colonialism so that's kind of well, what happens there you, and, mm -hmm. you know um so you you haven't they really haven't embraced magical realism until and like in, into recently because it has just been there's been such a negative view of magic Sure. In South Africa, especially again yeah. with colonization and, and different uh, uh, different groups groups of, of people in in in, in, in Africa with having different beliefs about magic. So, uh, if anybody's really interested, in this article is "Magical Realism: A Narrative of Celebration, A Narrative of Celebration or Disillusionment." 
South Africa Literature in the Transition Period by Pauline Grizetta, G-R-Z-E-D-A. I would recommend it. Nice. So that's my pro. Love it. So, madame, mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about some things we might not have cared about as much. Are our, our, our meat? I really want grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, FYI, I so I'm a keto. Well, not keto. I'm not keto, Kayla. I'm gonna say keto. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm on like low carb because that oh, works for me. Keto, yeah, okay. Keto, yeah. So, um, Aldi has this keto bread. Um, they have a seven grain or something like that. It's so fucking good. Like a lot of times, keto stuff tastes like garbage. Well, right, because um, there's like. Very it's few carbs in it. Yeah, yeah. it's made mm -hmm. with saw, uh, sawdust and uh, hair. I'm yeah. kidding. Mm -hmm. That's not true, but it's mm -hmm. not great. Yeah, but these, this keto bread, and it's called just keto, I think it's just called keto bread. I love and, Aldi um, so much. Yeah, and it's, they have a whole wheat. I don't like it, the whole wheat as much, it's more spongy, but the, because this one's got like nuts in it, like, like mm -hmm. um, sesame, really good. Totally recommend. Right. 10 out of 10. So delicious. I just went and bought like two more loaves. I yeah. like bread. Um, probably answer some questions about me. Um, <laughs> at any rate. Um, all right. So my meat was that there was just a lot going on in this story. Okay. Like a ton going on. I fully recognize, you know, like she's got her own bullshit she needs to deal with. He's got his own bullshit he needs to deal with. Um, there is an entire another aspect of her... Something that is a is a major plot point and issue for her is um, is fear of abandonment. Mm -hmm. She knows, like in her heart, she knows that everyone will leave her. Yeah, and that's a major issue for her, and it, it makes sense. She her parents died when she was two. She has no family. Her, um, of course, like when that happens, if someone both parents pass, then this at least in the u.s like the state will then contact relatives blood relatives and say right. like are you willing to take in this child and everyone said no every fucking person in her family said no so she mm -hmm. ended up in the foster system um and she never got adopted so she aged out at 18 became an adult and got to live on her own but because of that entire experience where she bounced around to foster homes and no one ever claimed her and eventually everyone left her or gave her up that she feels that eventually everyone will even with seth like at one point she and seth get into an argument and they don't talk for like weeks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she it weighs heavily on both of them but she just assumed. She's like, well, I always knew he would leave in the end. Yeah. Um, so at any rate, Gaia has a lot going on. And she amidst does. all of this, you find out that she might have some family that she did not know existed. And that family yeah. is trying to seek her out. So um, there's just like, that adds a whole nother element to the shit that she is going through. And it just, it just felt like a lot. And I don't know, I, I don't have suggestions on how to fix that. So maybe this is kind of an asshole complaint, but like, there was just a lot. And I felt like focusing more on either the magic or the family mm -hmm. would have been preferable for me. And uh, this will, and I'm going to piggyback on yours. Uh, con and, and agree completely um, and and say and maybe the way to fix it is to say in, in my own view just because I liked the magic aspect of it so much is mm -hmm. maybe we maybe Jacob we explore Jacob's because I mean, there has to be a reason why Jacob's starting to really have these dreams too like to be yeah. part of the oh, dream yeah. so like maybe let's build it so that way he can manipulate the dreams too. Yeah, that would so, be cool. And then we can explore that sort of thing. And maybe mm -hmm. that's, and we just, and I hate to say it, we, we remove Seth and the, and the father part out of it. And we just, or Seth is not as big a, a big a part. Or maybe Seth is not such a dick about finding out about that. Like, yeah. Because he gets real shitty about the fact that, um, now I, I mean, we'll get into that more, but like, 
he gets shitty with her and Jake about mm-hmm. the fact that the, there's clearly something going on between the two of them. Yeah. Of course, he walks in on them making out. So yeah, like, like pretty close to possibly doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but so maybe that's 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 the fix is to like. Like you said, like focus on the magic or focus on one other part or, t- or, or like we said, take magic out altogether. But I think you, you, if we do take that element out, there's something charming. Like there's a lot charming of, of it being centered around magic. And that, like, there's that, that, um, that's the, that's the niche. That's the, yeah. that's the thing that makes Well, and that's in the acknowledgement, she even says like someone had suggested to her that she write about magic. And mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like, I don't. I didn't dislike that. No, no. I I actually would have kind of preferred it to be played up more. Yeah. Um, in preference to like adding in other stuff. Now the whole family aspect is the second book. Like there will be another book, and that family is the protagonist yeah. in the second book. But like, well, you know, even somebody, even Jacob says to her, like, "Has this happened before? Does this happen with other people?" And she goes. Don't you think if it did, we'd hear about it? Like, we right. we would have known. So there's something, you know, like, you, you could definitely play this up and, and, and play up the magic part of it more, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's my, that's so my, I'm piggybacking, because I agree 100%, and I'm just adding a little bit on to yours. Yeah, I feel you. So tell me about your bottom bun. So hold, hold please, while I contradict some things I just said. So... <laughs> One of the things that I really loved about this about the story is her relationship with Seth. Because mm-hmm. her friendship with Seth is like now the thing about Seth is that he appears in the beginning and then because the two of them don't talk for a while, he disappears for a while. Mm-hmm. He shows up again mainly because Jacob is like <coughs> how does he I think Seth actually shows up to Jacob and it's like, hey, he, he yeah, I'm gonna he go do about- this. I'm gonna go do this thing to support her. Yeah. Well, first they go out to dinner. He shows he he shows up at the work. Right. And he's like, yeah. FYI, I already sent a pizza. And Dad says it from you. Blah, blah, blah. Right. 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 Yeah. So, in the meantime, Jacob and Seth's relationship was already strained, and now it's mm-hmm. strained more because Seth walked in on his best friend and his brother making out. So. At the end, you get to see when, like, everything is kind of coming to a head, you get to see in real time her relationship with Seth. And in many ways, like, she she describes it over the course of the book. And in many ways, I saw parallels between Meredith and Christina on Grey's Anatomy, where, like, the two of them just know what the other needs. And whether it's healthy or not, they're just going to fulfill that. So, like, at one point... um, I forget. She must be talking about it where like she has spent days in bed. Yes. Okay. Where like she has spent days in bed and he just like comes over with food or like whatever Mm -hmm. it is that she needs and they don't talk about it, Mm -hmm. but he just comes over and like fulfills whatever need she has at that time. And he just knows exactly what she needs because he knows her. Um, that's very similar to like the early days of Grey's Anatomy where like Meredith and Christina had this, um, they call them the, the twisted sisters where like they just had this relationship where they knew what each other needed and they fulfilled that need, but they never actually talked about the thing that was bothering them. Um, so they're like short term addressing, but not mm-hmm. long term mm-hmm. fixing, you know? Yeah. Um, but at the end when the two of them start talking more, And Seth kind of fills her in on what he's dealing with Mm -hmm. and brings up important things that, like, impact their friendship. That was beautiful to me. That, like, Mm -hmm. they had this moment where where he was like, you are my best friend. You have always, you've been my best friend for a decade. Mm -hmm. And um, I've not always done I've not always done what I should have done and I haven't always been the best friend and here are ways that I would like to, to fix that with you. And, and he served up some hard truths for her also in those moments. So I enjoyed learning and seeing more about that friendship. I thought it was very sweet. The friendship that they have with each other. 
Well, and she has a very kind of strange relationship with his fiance. Are they getting girlfriend married? or girlfriend, partner yeah. or something? Lizzie, that was yeah. cute too. I enjoyed because that. Lizzie at one point comes to her and is like, "Can you fix this, please?" Because he's like being bad. He's like, like he's unbearable. Being, yeah, you need to fix this. And yeah, like in because unfortunately, guy is hard to get. To know because yeah. she's got social anxiety, right? So she's like, very closed Liz- off. Yeah, Lizzie's had re- and Lizzie's. I do like Lizzie because she's extremely honest. She's like, we're not close, yeah. we're not friends, right? But I need you to fix this. Yeah, and, and hey, guy totally is like, follow. I can't fix your relationship, man. Like, and she's like, I don't ask you to fix it. I just need you to fix him, fix your relationship with him, yeah, because it's affecting my relationship with him, right? Which a part of me was like, kind of like, well, that sucks that she's got to be the one to do it. But she knows that he's not going to do it unless she does it. Yeah. Because even though he knows her better than I think she knows herself at times, Mm -hmm. because he says to Jacob at one point, she's not fine. Yeah. I can see she's not fine. She's not fine. She says she's fine. She's not. Because Jacob says, well, she says she's fine. She's, Mm -hmm. I know her. She's not fine. She's not fine. You need to take, she's, you need to take care of her. She's not fine. Right. Um, and in fact, even that night, even that night. Um, the first night. Yeah. Yeah. He's, you know. Yeah. He's like, she's not fine. She's going to tell you she is, but she's not. Yeah. Um, no, it's funny because we're, I'm going to stay in the family and my pro is going to be Jacob. <laughs> and because Jacob, Jacob, I think, but of the two brothers, I think it's the perfect Because, yes, like, Seth knows that <laughs> Seth knows guy is not fine. And right. Jacob's just like, I-, I can do this. I'll fix it. Like, I'm, and there are times in this book where, like, while though he might not be extremely happy with his brother, like, he knows that sometimes that's what she needs. She needs her brother. And she, his brother, I should say. Mm-hmm. She needs him. And, she, and he kind of anticipates what she needs. And I think understands what she's going through a lot better than I think most men would. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a point where um, both guys have come to the house because he's kind of like, I haven't seen her for a week. She wanted to mm-hmm. the door. Can you yeah. please come and take help me take care of her? Because Seth has a key to her house, like a spare yeah. key to her house. I mean, and, and unfortunately, that end of that scene is not great for Seth and, and Gaia's relationship. But right. at the same time, part of it, I think, is very much... Um, because what what when Seth leaves, he leaves his key, mm-hmm. and I think that is kind of like to me more of a passing along of yeah. the of the of the role of, or the responsibility exactly to mm-hmm. to Jacob, and it's like yeah. now this is your key. This is you. you this is you taking care of her, okay. and um, when she does tell him about this magic, like I said. I think a lot, even though she makes him promise she won't leave, I don't think there's any, like, there's a, there's a point where she's getting upset because he's, like, he's looking around a lot, and he's, like, and he's tapping his foot, mm-hmm. and he's, I don't think it's him wanting to leave necessarily, I think it's more of him trying to process it. Yeah. And, and the other part of it is, like, who else is hearing this? Is anyone else hearing this? Yeah, is there anyone else? Like, it's when you feel like you, you've you broken with reality and you're like, is what I just saw real? And right. you, like, look around to other people and you're like, did anybody else just see that? Like, Right. And, like, I think I don't think it's, I don't think he even wanted to leave because I think she could have told him a lot of different crazy shit. He'd still been sitting there mm-hmm. because I think, I think he loved her. I think it was, because like he said he's loved her for, he's, he's, it had a crush on her for a long time. Right. I think that first night was enough for him to fall. I yeah, think he was probably. had fallen from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. So I think, and, and, and as caring as he is I mean, of her and how much he takes care of her throughout this book, through her many breakdowns, mm-hmm. I think speaks volumes, volumes about him. Yeah. Um, He's a very patient person. He is. Um, there's towards like towards the end um it's pretty much when he says he loves her uh for the first time she opened her mouth she didn't know if she was too it was to welcome his tongue or cry out in relief she didn't care she wrapped her arms around him tears streaming down her face at his warmth his familiarity 
Baby, he said, moving back, cupping her face. Stop crying. I am. I did. He chuckled, wiping at the tears that kept coming. I love you, but I'm not sure I want to taste what's coming out of your nose. Yes. <laughs> she laughed, but then her brain, her brain replied, replayed his words. You love me? Duh, he said gently. Duh. Everything you've told me I already knew, Gaia, but you needed to know it too. You needed to decide what you wanted, whether you wanted to trust me. I do. I trust you. I know, tenderly, he kissed her. I know this is hard for you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you love me and are facing it. More importantly, I'm so damn proud you love yourself enough to face it. I mean, you okay, can't so ask for Okay, so I actually, dude. I had the next part also okay, highlighted. Okay. Yeah, and so it. the continuation of that is, she leaned her forehead against his chest as if by doing so, his heartfelt words would seep into her mind. She hadn't thought about it that way, but facing her anxiety was a form of self-love. She needed to accept every part of herself. That meant acknowledging every part of herself. It meant asking for help when she needed it. She deserved to love herself. She deserved to be loved too. And she would learn how to love herself and to accept the love those around her offered. But I loved that part about like, he was saying like, I I will, I forget if if it was in the part you just read or if it was separate. But at one point he says to her, like, I love all of your parts. I will love everything about you. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm not going to say I love my anxiety, but like, no, I, but it's, yeah, but I, I had Come never thought about, like yeah. right. Like I had, I had never thought before about, um, I never thought of it in terms before of like dealing with my anxiety, facing my anxiety and learning how to like harness it for good. Yeah. Is a form of self-love. Yeah. And I liked that. I liked that. I, I enjoy the framing of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree with you. Cosign on that. Cool, yo. So hard. Cosign. So hard on that. <laughs> well, lady, do you want to do some um, recommendations or some um, ratings? Yeah. Do uh, you want to talk to me about hearts? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say three and a half. I, okay. I really, I think, I think the journey for her finding, like finding that he wasn't going to leave her and that he really did love her was quite, I was taken with that. Yeah. Um, I said three, like he, there's a, there's a heavy aspect of, I don't know, this is like a weird thing to say, but like a quiet romance behind it, you know, mm -hmm. where like, it's just this, he really cares for her and you, you know that pretty quickly. He really, yeah. he falls for her pretty easily. Really? Yeah. It's not insta love, but it's pretty close. Yeah. Well also mind you, they've known each other for like a decade. They just haven't yeah. talked in a long time, you know? Exactly. Um, and he had a crush on her when he the was most beautiful girl, woman in the world. Yep. I mean, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. You and I have talked about that before with like Nico and Elizabeth, you know, just that like yeah. childhood love. Um, so there's an element of that there, and I felt like some of the shit he says to her is ridiculously sweet. Just yeah. ridiculously sweet. Yeah. Um, all right, she does so. have a grand gesture eventually. So She does. And she that does. is very sweet. GG. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's talk about eggplants. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> Your text last night was so funny. I was like, oh, should I tell her? <laughs> should I tell her? Um... So here's the thing. It's not the, there's, oh, a lot of how do I say this? There's a lot of foreplay, but there's no gratuitous sex in it whatsoever. No. I mean, it's a fade to black. It's a fade to black. So, um. You left me hot and bothered. You did. You left me hot and bothered. I needed Trace. to see, I needed to see the penis that we heard about the outline of earlier in the book. Right. Like, listen, I considered making that the meat of my story was that I wanted it to be hotter. But the thing is, so I gave it two eggplants because the the foreplay was hot as fuck. It is, yeah. Like, him, really hot. Him uh, going to town on her, her breast, yes. Oh, there's that line. Oh, my God. I do have to go, keep going. I want to read the line about her boobs. I, like, <laughs> maybe that. I thought at one point, like, at the beginning, because the thing is, this story begins, the first, like, within two or three chapters, the two of them are making out in Seth's bedroom, right? Oh, so, like, yeah, I just yeah. assumed... That it would only get hotter from there. But it kind of didn't. Um, there's a lot of foreplay between the two of them where they make out and, like, 
there are thoughts between the two of them. A lot of erections. A lot of erections. There is there are a lot of erection jokes. It's so funny. Um, their banter is enjoyable, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, but they like, especially in the dreams, there's more like sexual discussions or like sexual tension in the dreams. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you don't actually see them in real time having sex. Um, two things. Okay. One, I want to read this quote because it made me laugh. Cannot wait. He, he made a face as if to protest, but then his eyes dipped to her chest. She looked down too, smiled. Her breast had shown up to work. Yep. She'd worn one of her sturdiest bras, which while not entirely comfortable, did amazingly supportive things to her boobs. Mm-hmm. Onward and upwards, apparently. Yes. But that, that made me laugh. Her, yeah. Her boobs had come to work. Her boobs so, had come to work. So... The other thing I want to say is I'd like you, everyone who's listening to notice that you and I both... Oh, okay, so my mine is one and a half hearts. Okay, fair. Or, sorry, eggplants. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, it was hot, but... So I'd like to say I'm getting this one and a half, but this didn't deter from the plot. It didn't deter, deter uh, from my overall enjoyment of the book. I'm yeah. saying that because I wrote, a, I wrote a review this week, and I fucking went off on another Goodreads reviewer. <laughs> And because the reviewer, uh, this other reviewer of this book was like, I love the characters, the storyline, the chemistry. But then they started, and then all of a sudden it was like dot, 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 or whatever. And she's like, but then they, they was... There was gratuitous sex, so uh, I, I, I just couldn't finish it. One star. And I'm like, I... Okay. For okay, one, whatever, lady. Whatever. First off, if she she didn't finish it, she got to the one makeout scene. There wasn't even any sex. It was a makeout se- session. <sighs> I I am not because not I did not see peen in this book. Right, you sort of, kind of, but not really. Like his dream and oh, because there it. is like a lot of allusions to. I mean, he, he is naked, naked in one of the dreams, yeah. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. but. Just because the, the pri- they didn't mash their private parts together does not take away from the book. Right. Again, like I say in my review, I don't troll like Christian fiction and just give everything one star reviews because I don't right. see a dick. Right. Like, just because it's, I'm giving it one and a half hearts to, or uh, big plants does not take away from the book. Right. That's no. Just my totally PSA. agree. I'm yeah. getting off my soapbox. Fucking bad, shitty Goodreads re- reviewers. Fuck off. If you yeah, don't like it's it because ridiculous. Like, if the story I, sucks, the story sucks. Then that's right. that's where I give my bad, my get bad reviews. That's what I keep my vitriol inside for. Is the bad, right. the you know, not because I didn't get to see someone's dick. Right. I mean, just like get over yourself. It's it's not. I right. didn't think it, again. Like I didn't even list it as like the meat of my of my compliment sandwich because in the end it really didn't detract from the book for me would no. I have preferred to see it sure but like it didn't exactly. make it didn't make me dislike the book no I mean uh, uh, I forgot it's Sarah Hogles like um, that one that I like there was like allusions to sex but you don't see that I fucking love the shit out of that book right right it's like don't give me don't hmm. anyhow you should have your review status per you know well i was taken away from you right like i i mean if you don't if you don't like explicit stuff then just don't Don't read it or like don't read a review like or don't write a review review. of it like that's not that's not fair to the author that sucks no that's so unethical it's so unethical to me like i like in, in the review, I say, like, I could have written, you know, that one book I, tur- I turned down, I said, I wrote back, I said, I can't review this. This isn't for me. Yeah. I'm not reviewing this. I said, I don't want to hate read it and then write a bad review. That, right. Because the author's not the author's fault that I, that's not for me. Right. So the same thing. It's not for you. Good, Good for, for her, you, not, not for me. For me. Exactly. exactly. Anywho. All right. Let's do, um, do you want to do stunt casting? Um, and then yeah, come sure. back with recommendations? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I only did two. Uh, I did four. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Do you want to do, um, what do you want to do first? Um, okay. So why don't we start with, um, oh, I have to change. Pinterest is being weird today. Sorry. It's okay. It's not your fault. I don't think you did anything to I make did. Pinterest be weird today. No. You, that's what, no. that's your secret job you actually work on. Oh, I, I told you I worked in IT. That's, 
Um, okay, so I I assume you did Gaia and Jacob. I did. Okay, so how about I start with Seth and Gemma? Oh, wonderful. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Here is my Gemma. Um, oh, she's so pretty. Isn't she? Yeah. She's pretty great. Um, so my Gemma is Solange Knowles, which is Beyonce's sister. Um, also a singer. I believe she's also been in some, in some acting roles. She Uh, has, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from what I have been told, she's actually, I don't want to say actually, like she is also extremely talented. It's just that like. She beat the shit out of Jay-Z in the, in the, uh. Fuck Elevated yes, she time. did. <laughs> Things you kinda, need to know about Solange Knowles. That. Yeah. She's kind of awesome. <laughs> Not She's got like your Jay-Z, back. But that was around the time Lemonade came out, so eh, we all know how that... I don't yeah, know. You know. I mean, do we like Jay-Z? I don't know. I don't know nothing. I'm not going to say anything about anybody because I don't know. I mean, do we know he cheated on her? I think we do. I know, but I mean, I'm, I'm just not gonna. It's not, hey, it's not my marriage. So I'm not going, but a good honor for beating the shit out of the elevator. Mm hmm. Talk um, about writing about, about, about men. I mean, but damn, Bay, you stay with him. Bay. Anywho. I mean, oh, they made a lot of money off of that. So They I don't did. Know. Maybe, and, uh, maybe it was all a PR stunt. We don't know. We don't know these people. Um, all right. So then here's the thing about. Jacob and Seth, like they're brothers, right? Mm -hmm. But the descriptions of them, you and I were a little confused about. Yeah. So on the cover, like the, it's like one of the kind of trendy cartoon covers. Mm -hmm. He has dark skin or not white skin Mm -hmm. on the cover. Right. I pictured him when I read him, I read him like a black man. But... You had said, like, we revisited this before we started recording, that his hair, like, fell over his forehead. Yeah, it is, like, straight black hair fell over his forehead. I can find it, but... Right, so, like, that does not go with my casting choices, but... I don't know. So what I did was I googled, um, like, brothers who are also actors... Mm-hmm. And by brothers, I mean, like, siblings. Right. Um, like like the Hemsworths, yes. Yes, like the Hemsworths. So I chose uh, this fine-looking gentleman as Seth. Um, now, he may be the younger of the two, but I don't know. I didn't look up their ages. Um, but apparently, these two are brothers. Uh, this gentleman's name is, uh, I assume it's Stefan James. Because it's S T E P H A N. Oh, oh hello. hello. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Ooh, uh, yes. Yeah. I, I like the fade wrong. in the second one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, nothing wrong. Um, he. So He's they're got Canadian. Lips. Yes, oh, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, they're. They're from Canada. Um, he played Jesse Owens in Race in oh, 2016. Okay. Okay. He was mm-hmm. also in If Beale Street Could Talk and Selma, 21 Bridges. Um, what else? Nothing that I'm like. Uh... Oh, he Oh, he played John Lewis in Selma. Oh, okay. That's why he looks so familiar. Um, <sighs> yeah. R.I.P. I know. I mean, I can't. I still can't really talk about it. Um, he play. He was in uh, Degrassi: The Next Generation. Um, <laughs> of course, he was. He's Canadian. They were all fucking in Degrassi. <laughs> I was in Degrassi. <laughs> so, uh, at any rate, Stefan James is who I picked for Seth. Nice. Uh, how about you? Tell me who. Do you want to do Jacob or do you want to do? Yeah, let's Gaia do Jacob. First? Okay. Let's do Jacob. Who is your Jacob, darling? My Jacob. So I was having a hard time finding pictures of him. So I did find the, the, the quote. There's actually two. She talks about Carlton at one point, which I thought was which she built first before Chris came in the, into when she was talking about writing. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Carlton, she says, like, has green eyes. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and like, yeah. 
But this is what she, when um, uh, J uh, Jake is changing. She's she certainly written them the way in her books. She'd observed some of the... Wait. What the fuck did I just do? <laughs> okay, here it is. Um, he gave her a small smile, then threw a t-shirt over his head. It had his dark, not quite straight hair clinging to his forehead, making him look like a teenager again. And I was like, well... Uh, so I was looking for so if you if you Google South African uh, actors it's, or uh, yeah actors it's all just white people and I was like right. well this doesn't help me right. um, so I did find this gentleman who is a South African actor and he's very attractive I'm gonna show okay so one is from Pinterest I can't the, I could not find um, hold on yours um, God bless America uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to mine. You son of you son of a bitch. Um, there it is. So this gentleman, I'm gonna send you the one. Okay. I'm gonna find the other one that I had. Oh my god, he's so pretty. Um, <laughs> uh, he's really attractive. I'm just like I can't. Ah, you're hot. Um, I just. One or two bad things with him. Um, My puppy just stretched out. <laughs> I could not hear that. Ah, uh, copy image address. Okay. So here's the first one, and then so this is the one from Pinterest, and then this is an extremely large one with the other one. Um, oh my. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh huh. Yup. God damn. Uh, okay. I, no. And oh, here's one with him in a suit. Cause you know why wouldn't you have him in a suit? Cause I would put this guy in a suit any possible time I could. His name is Kapala Davies. Mm -hmm. and, Holy um, fucking hell! Yup. Well, yeah, his eyes. I just can't stop looking. They at are but he pretty has, incredible. Like, he has curly hair. Um, he mm -hmm. looks like he um, is not. Um, he's he might be um, Middle Eastern. Of some sort. Uh, like in descent. I mean, it does say he's yeah, a South African actor. Yeah, I don't know. Um, South African. Blah, 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 um, but, like, he. I, I don't necessarily know if he is black. Um, but uh, I don't know. But he's, he's attractive. gorgeous. He's fucking hotter than Hill. Um, but that's kind of what I picture. Because he's his hair is, like, curly. And yeah. I can see it falling over his forehead. In fact, it is in one of the pictures. So that's that is that is my Jake. Um, his eyelashes are, are so incredible. Long. Yeah, right? right? God. Very pretty. Mm -hmm. Very. God damn. Mm. Good hair. It's, he's got, he's got Oscar Isaac hair. Yeah, yeah, he does. You're right. To touch it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10. Also that Would suit recommend. photo. Holy right? shit. Wow. Um, he wears a suit. He can wear a suit. He can indeed wear a suit. Mm. Anywho. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So this guy supposedly is the brother. Of the other gentleman? Of the other gentleman. Um, damn. His name. <laughs> I damn. know. I know. Uh, his name is, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Shamir Anderson. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Um, so he, it, it's backward in the age. So, like, it says he has two okay. younger brothers, Stefan James, and then another one. Um, technically, Jacob is younger than Seth. I don't care, it's you guys. It's interesting the two different names, but, I mean, two, well, they could be... It could they be could be step-siblings, like, I don't know, or, it could like... Be they could have, too, who knows? Or like, different... Like, yeah, it could be, like, like Sheen. Like, Sheen Exactly. And, yeah. So um, is, or yeah. they could have different dads. I don't fucking know. I mean, who whatever. Um, so, yeah, at any rate, they were both in race, actually. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, let me... It's one I've never her. seen. I've wanted to see it. I've never watched it. Same. Um, he played someone named Ulase Ulas Peacock. I don't know who that is. Um, I know, but I love that fucking name. It's pretty amazing. Um, he is also, I did not know this until I looked him up, there is a chapter four of John Wick. Oh, is there? Apparently, because he's in it. 
it's uh, in post production. I told you guys, right I, I, we've talked about my thing with John Wick, right? That I've never watched any of them. I started watching the first one, and then when I got to the, it said, yeah, extreme puppy death, and I was like, nope, we're done here. Nope, nope. nope okay, nope, so nope. I truly think. Now I have watched John Wick more than once, actually, the first one. If I mean, you it's just up my alley, it's Keanu Reeves for fuck's sake. The thing is, I think if you just don't watch that part, you'll be okay. The thing you don't see like a graphic. I don't think you see a graphic death. I'd have to look, but it's like it's gra- it's graphic. Like the aftermath is graphic. Yeah, because he finds the puppy, right? Yeah, he does. Yeah, this whole thing is about the dead puppy. Well, yeah, I mean, he goes off because they they killed the dog that his What's, wife sent to him. His dead it, like, wife Mar- sent. Is it Marigold or is it is it Daisy? What is the I name of Daisy. the puppy? Fuck. It's Daisy. There's also because I was watching, I was like, "That is the cutest puppy on the planet." I'm like, "Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no!" Because they like so. What happens at the beginning of John Wick is that well, his wife dies. Yeah, and yeah, his wife. Him, yeah. Take gave him the puppy like she had yeah. it arranged that a puppy would be a, would be sent oh to i him. got to that part and i when i saw the puppy and i was like and that's really the thing was that he was like this puppy was like the first thing that gave me any kind of hope or joy since the death of my wife and you killed it so now i'm just gonna wreak havoc on your entire life and he fucking does yeah it feels that's good because it's a revenge story if you have not gone to does the die does the dog die dot com i i would recommend oh. it because they tell you about all the animals that die in certain if you're a horror movie fan such yeah. as myself you have to use that quite often there have been horror movies where i'm like i'm not watching that yeah nope um I'm good. i have a hard time watching animal movies anyway because i just assume at least one animal is going to die um or many had died behind the scenes my little notice oh god okay um so at one point I was reading when I was just working my way through Amy Penza's catalog, um, like not that long after I met her, uh, Daughter of Rage and Beauty is the book that we did for this podcast, but I was reading her contemporary romance. Um, she has a couple of them. There's one series. Um, I forget. I'm not remembering the names of them right now. Something about Let Go. Can't Let You Go, Never Let You Go. I forget. Let anyway, It Go. Let It Go. Something unknown. I forget. Earlier, my kid was singing Moana, and it was really funny because uh, she was saying, like, what is wrong with me? There's a whole, like, an entire song where she's like, what is wrong with me? And and in my mind, I was like, fuck, am I saying that? You know, like, I was trying to figure out where she was getting that, and then I realized oh. she was singing Moana. Yeah. And then I was able to, like, reel back the existential crisis, like, that I have said too many terrible things in front of my child. Also, yesterday she screamed, damn it, and I laughed my ass off. <laughs> she used it properly and everything. I was so proud. Okay, so anywho, um, at any rate, I, t- I was reading. It's the first in, the in like, a two-book series of these contemporary romances from Amy Penza, and there's a service dog. Like, this, mm. he's um, former military. The dog is a service dog. Um... But, like, also sort of serves as, like, a canine. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, a super small town. So it's just this, like, sheriff with a dog that you assume mm-hmm. is a canine. Mm-hmm. But he's actually a service dog because he returned from war and has PTSD. So, um, at any rate, at one point, the dog is not well. And I texted her, and I was like, Amy, I swear to God, if you kill this dog. We are no longer friends. Right. Like, the next morning, she texts me, and she goes... I just saw this. <laughs> she goes, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure it's like a rule that you're not allowed to kill the dog. There is, isn't one of um, the Kristen Higgins, doesn't the dog die in um, uh, Catch the Day? Didn't you download Catch the Day? I think I did, but I never read it because then like oh, life took I'm, over. I'm pretty sure a dog might pass in that one. Fucking hell. Oh, I, oh damn it. Hang on. But then so- she gets a puppy at the end. Ah, God, it's so I think, hard. I, it's been so long. I, that was not one of my favorites of hers, so. Because it's Sorry, in Chris, the, yeah, Catch of the Day, you're right. Yeah. I, do, I also I do downloaded one Christmas called someone. Better Than People by Rowan Parrish. That's also about dogs. Um, yeah, I also, that's also, so Harlequin has their own app called Gloss. Um, I'm telling you right now, I, Harlequin, get on that movie making shit. And mm-hmm. blow passion flicks out of the water, please. Yeah. 
Please yeah. and thank you. That's also where I have the Viscount who loved me because they were having a sale. Oh yeah. Uh, um, you know, I was thinking about it when I was reading. When I was reading, I'm like, this actually would be another book that would be nice for like something like Passion Flix or oh like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Carla yeah, Quinn to pick up because Agreed. it would be nice to have something that's set in another country. Yep. And mm-hmm. it wasn't With about a professor color. fucking a student. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Agreed. Cool. Um, who is your Gaia? So it just so happened that, I mean, I love this woman. I love her. And she happens to be South African. Oh. I mean, I want to do horribly filthy things with her. Oh. Okay. I'm not going to lie. And um, she oh, is just goddamn gorgeous. And I've loved her for a good amount of time. Ooh, just son past of a year. bitch. Oh, yeah, wait till the last she one. She's beautiful. Wait till the last one. Holy shit. I'm straight, right? Oh, my God. The one with her hair down and the really bright, the dark lips. So, yeah, I saw her on Lucifer. I'm like, how? who is this woman? How do I know her? How do I get to know her? Mm-hmm, gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Fucking gorgeous. So, yeah, that's Lizzie Ann Brandt. Um, I just, that's what I said. I want to, but she is South African. And, in fact, the one tat- one picture I sent you, you can see the tattoo at the bottom, yes. it's got I, a yes. South African tattoo. Of course, I noticed. Yeah. So yeah, that's that is my Gaia. <sighs> ten out of ten, uh, proof. Yeah. At one point, and she does have. There's a couple of pictures. I know on the show because they put Maz, they go call her Maz in the show in different hairstyles all the time. Some she's got cornrows. Sometimes she has like uh, she'll just have like straight. But and then, but there have been times where she's had the natural fro. <sighs> girl mm. or the natural curls like the the, the corkscrew curls mm-hmm. mm. get on it anyhow yes so who's your guy <laughs> <laughs> i did send those uh, a couple of those pictures to my husband uh to mr veronica <laughs> he just texted back question marks and i said i'm straight right <laughs> he, <laughs> he said i hope we're at least by since <laughs> Mowage. Um okay. She is beautiful. She really is. Jesus Christ. Okay. So uh I my Gaia is this woman right here. Um her name <gasps> Oh wow. She looks a little bit like Janet right? Jackson. A little bit in that yeah, in that one that photo especially. But also in the second though, one. Just... A little bit in the second one though too. Um so her name is Cat, <gasps> okay, right? She's gorgeous. Holy right, her shit, name is Cat Graham. Yeah. So hang on, I would pull up her IMDb. Um, I had saved like a screenshot on IMDb. Her eyes. Mm-hmm. So uh, she is an actress. Um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. She was in. Um, Rise of the Teenage Mut- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Sure. Sure. Uh, the Night Before Christmas. Night is in K-N-I-G-H-T. Oh, God. Isn't that one of those, like, Hallmark movies? I probably. I hope so. I want to watch it. Um, she was in something called How It Ends, which I feel like sounds familiar, but I don't know oh, why. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, keep talking. I'm going to go get it. Forrest Whitaker was in that. Um... She was in The Vampire yes, Diaries. it's a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. She was in The Vampire Diaries for a few episodes. She played someone called Bonnie Bennett, which could not sound less like what she looks like. Um, Do you know she kind of reminds me of this Rashida, Rashida Jones a little bit? Oh, and okay, I can see that. With the, the bangs, she looks a little bit like Rashida Jones. A little bit, yeah. Um, she was also in three episodes of Hannah Montana, she was in Seventeen again. She also goes under, has in the past gone under the name Katarina Graham. So that would appear also. Uh, but anyway. So pretty. So Yeah, gorgeous. she's beautiful. Like, just oh. beautiful. Oh, my God. I'm sending you a picture. Oh, my God, that I found. Fuck me. Anyhow. Um, mm-hmm. like literally, fuck me, please. It's fine. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, jeez. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> I can't handle. I can't handle it with the women tonight. I just can't. Yeah, they're so yeah. pretty. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what? This picture here. She looks like uh, Vanessa Williams. This picture I'm sending to you. 
Sorry, I'm just like, she looks like this person. She looks like this person. God, oh, she's, she's beautiful. Oh, those lips. Jesus. Mm. Anywho. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. I totally, 10 out of 10, approve. Yep. So, anywho, that's my Gaia. Nice. Mm-hmm. Well, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do uh, a little bit of a, a what? What are we taking? Oh, uh, uh, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Would you recommend this book? Yeah. Okay. And would this book embarrass our moms? Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Um, no. No, this book would not embarrass our moms. No. I don't think so. Not no. horribly so. No, I, no, especially now my, my mother ha being in the middle of the hating game and haven't gotten to the two, like, chapter. The entire scene. chapter sex scene? Yeah, no, um, no, no. A little, a little nipple lickage is nothing amongst friends, right? Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> That's so... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Again, let's reiterate, the podcast always embarrasses our moms. 100%. I mean... I don't feel bad about that. I have used the word cum gutters a number of times on this show. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Cum gutters got cum gutters. Um, it is yeah, what it no, is. No, I think it is what it is. Yeah. I think this, like I said, if if, if, if Passion Flicks are such, not Passion Flicks, if Harley Quinn wanted to pick this up and make they a They really should. It, yeah. You should. And I think it would be like hot enough there. It would be like they, they, she'd be in a bra a lot. So hello. Um, but it mm -hmm. wouldn't be like it, it would be actually right up their alley. Yeah. Because, you know, as long as boobs come to work. Boobs do come to work. That's all, all right. you got to ask. OK, so uh, we shall take a brief respite and we'll come oh, back. I ask and just... you if you'd recommend this book? Would you? Oh, yeah, I would. Book? Totally. Okay, yeah. Why not? You. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? All right, we're going to take a brief respite. We'll be back in yes. two and two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're back. We're back. And we're tired. We're fucking Let's tired. Let's just be real about that. Jesus, we're tired. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. So now we're going to talk about things that we, um, in our eyes, in our earballs this week that we enjoyed. So, um, Madame, do you have a recommendation of what you're reading? Yeah, so we've been reading a lot for the podcast. Um, mm -hmm. But in between, I was able to squeeze in another book from Lucy Score. Um, score. I, score. Uh, so I, I read... <laughs> <laughs> I read Pretend You're Mine. Uh, mm -hmm. Colon, A Small Town Love Story. Benevolence, oh. book one. Um, it's a three-book series. They're all standalones. Um, it's maybe, it's about three years old now. It's, uh, it's good. It's a fake relationship scenario. Um, she is a disaster as a human, but has left her boyfriend, um, because he was cheating on her and ends up in this like runs out of gas literally runs out of gas pulls into um a bar basically mm -hmm. and because she is who she is in chaos just like follows her ensues yeah yes uh she ends up breaking up a fight between like she ends up breaking up a domestic where this Ooh. boyfriend is like being abusive with his girlfriend. Yikes. Okay. Yeah. That's how she meets the hero is Ooh. that he is the one who is like standing over her trying to wake her up when the boyfriend like knocks her out. Holy shit. Yeah. So anyway, big like uh, explosive start, I guess, to the book. <laughs> Quite the meat cute. Yes. Quite the meat cute. Um, and then they end up being, he's about to deploy again so mm -hmm. they end up in like a fake relationship scenario just to like appease his family um for about a month um mm -hmm. and then the book continues so anyway it's it's very is there like letter is, is there a pist uh, pistolary part of the book yes there is yay okay yeah I, you which fucking, is fun you know i fucking love that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh and it's fun um and funny like mm -hmm. the shit that she gets into I don't understand how she even ends up there, but um, but she's 
she's really fun. And she, um, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but it's good. Pretend mm-hmm. you're mine. Lucy score. Very nice. good. I yeah. like Lucy score a lot. Um, yeah, we she's great. About- the one I started, my one that I read of hers, what was it called again? You know, Rock Bottom. Rock it was bottom. Rock Bottom. Yeah. Because then I read the best worst man or the worst best man from her. Oh yes, 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 yeah. Also, really excellent. There's a point in in the uh, Rock Bottom where she where the hero heroine is is like living back with her parents, and she's hugging a pillow. I'm pretty sure it was a Justin Bieber pillow. <laughs> but it's one of those ones with sequins on it oh so like she's like he's rubbing the sequins it's very funny um but yeah she, it was i she's she's got a real good um comedic uh, she's she's got she's good with that she's good with comedic timing with her writing and stuff like that with dialogue yeah she okay. is and that and that does not take away from like this is a a very heartfelt book there's a lot going 100%, on like yeah. under the surface of these characters that yeah. um is and, not yeah. evident at the beginning. Well, and with Rock Bottom, like, it, it's... The the heroine is going through, like, a major, like, almost like... Well, it's she's she's in her 20s, like, late 20s, early 30s. She's going through, like, a possibly a midlife, midlife crisis. So it is, like, there are parts of it where you're, like... And also, Rock Bottom, enemies to lovers, FYI. Of course it is. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, what are you reading? Well, um, so I wrote a review, um, a few guys would enjoy, um, um, it's in our review section of the, of the, of the, po- uh, the website. Um, I got on the train. I was lucky enough to get an arc of this book. Um, it's The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams. Mm-hmm. And. Yeah, you texted me about this. Oh my God. I, in my d- review, I called it an eternal sunshine book. Like, Aww. I wish I could go back and read oh, it, yeah. seeing, like, not knowing anything about the story. Um, it's... <sighs> so, the the story involves um, a writer. She is um, in... You've got Britta, who's the... Uh, she's, like, a lifestyle... Uh, she works for a lifestyle magazine. And um, then you have um, Wes, his Wesley. But... Um, He's, that's, yeah. <laughs> Goes by Wes. And Wes is the owner of a, um, uh, like, oh, like a, like a uh, Noom app, you know, like the, like the fitness sort of app. Oh, sure. Okay. Where it's focused on just getting you fit, not so much losing weight as like making sure you, you feel like you're healthy. Okay. Um, Love it. And Love so it. she decides she, put, uh, she, um, is kind of, um, she has to write a, like a story. Like she joins this group, this this I forgot the name of it. Fit me, Fit me app. While her coworker joins a different app, which happens okay. to be owned by Wes's ex fiance or okay. ex's ex girlfriend. And so, a good forty percent of the book is epistolary. It's like emails between her because he he ends up assigning himself to a couple. Because that's what he did when they first started. It was he was he was a coach. He was a trainer, and so they're like all of his coworkers, are like or his like the partners are like, just fucking, you're you're annoying. You need to like, you need to have an aversion. They're like just take some take some of the the new clients on as partners or as as you know as the new people on as clients. Okay. You know? And so he does, and he happens to take on Britta. Does not know that she's the writer for this magazine. And so the whole part of it is, and she's very witty. Obviously, she's a writer. And so they start to become attracted to one another via the app. And so it starts with emails and it tend, then it moves to, like, chat messages. And the meet cute is one of the most interesting meet cutes I've ever read. Um, I, even in my review, I do not spoil it because I think it's something you have to experience um, oh man, is this like on the level with um, Single Dad Seeks Juliet? No, it's even it's even it's crazier than that. Oh god, okay. Yeah, I mean, and it's it, it's a serious sort of meet cute, like it's um, but so like it's just and and she does she does start to like she gains confidence and he just he, it's one of those he it, it's it's insta love for him 
And there's so many parts where I went back and read his lines and his dialogue. And it's just because the meet cute is actually from his perspective. Because you get dual perspectives, which you all know we love. We all love um, that. Mm-hmm. But the meet cute is in his perspective. And I'm so glad it was. I'm so glad it was. Um, yeah, I it was if it's it's up there as my favorite book of this year. Oh man. Okay. Yeah, Damn it, I, my TBR just on like out of control. Yeah, I mean, I I just <sighs> it it just hit me right in the feels. It warmed my cockles and <sighs> it was yeah, 100% right. the fastest way to fall. All right. And I don't know, let me look real quick. I don't know what we're talking about with her. I think she had another book. Uh, she's only, Jesus Christ, she's only had one other, one other book. Really? Yeah, this is her sophomore, and the first, oh, the first damn. one was How to Fail at Flirting. And I think, oh no, this is, no, no, this is something different. Um, it's not, it's not somebody we know, I mean, it's not a series, it's not like somebody else in the series, but, um, she also, like, if I, I, I mean, I'm a, I, you, you don't, they don't come right out and say it, but it is also biracial, so a biracial oh, okay. relationship. Um, and it looks like the how to fail at fall at uh, flirting might also be. Um, so, but it, w- they don't focus on that's like not the focus of it. Like, it, like okay. I see in my re- and it's obviously funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but my review, I was like, literally everybody in this book, like all the characters, even the villain, is like there's something about them that you, the villain. Although I said my con was I needed the villain to, to fucking suffer more. Um, <laughs> But like you meet her family, and her family's like this warm hug. Like it's just the so the characters are just well, really, really well written. Anyhow, yeah. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, I would hundred percent. Puppy. Sorry, she's just like got up and stretched. She's like, can you please fucking let me out of here? Um, no, because you sleep in your crate. Uh, at any rate, um. All right, I'm not listening to anything because I've been actually listening to your podcast. So my oh. recommendation this week is uh, booze, boobs, and blood. <laughs> um, FYI, we have um, we're recording tomorrow for um, of Halloween seven and eight. So nice. it should be. I have a lot of notes, so it should be interesting. Um, P.S. I I could get down with a Freddy Krueger series, like if that's the Oh, it's, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. You mean, like, it's, it's you hear those? Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that's on the dock. No, but I could join on that. Oh, you want to join on the Freddy Krueger? I think I could. Because I think it's, like, you just, te- you camp, don't invite him enough. in. You don't invite him in. No. And honestly, it's campy enough that it's not scary. So it's not like, it's, it's gory. They're very gory, but it's like, you know, it's. But I've fun. seen Nightmare on Elm Street already. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can, and I can sit there and talk about my love hate relationship with uh, Robert Englund. That's fine. Yeah, see, exactly. So I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, anyway, okay, okay, what okay. are you listening to? So um, I decided to go with The Bugle. Um, the Bugle is was actually started by, um, it started as a podcast. Um, it's a satirical, like, if you can figure out where the, the, you know, the roots of the last week tonight. Are ah, it would be the bugle okay. because it was started by John Oliver and um, you know, Andy I mean, Zolfin. John Oliver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if they call it like um, the the news. What do they call it? A new audio newspaper for a virtual for a visual world. Um, so it's like a satirical bend on all of you know all the hot button issues. Um, obviously, John is not involved anymore, but he was the one who started it. Um, and so you get people in who are like a lot. Most of them they get comedians in, and they um, they but like the Bugle has kind of split off into a bunch of different podcasts now too. But the Bugle okay. is like the main one, and um, and then they also have uh, the Gargle, the Last Post, Bush's board game thing, and Tiny Revolutions. Um, <laughs> but I would totally recommend. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anybody like there's a whole bunch of people like a lot of satiria obviously uh, satirists that are on it um, that usually either come on or they 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 bring on as uh, guests. Um, but I we again would totally recommend. It's funny. It's very funny. Um, the one episode right now that is playing is <laughs> um, Vice Signaling, 
and um uh yeah so i mean it's like it's it's just something you need when you kind of like you want to know you want to be informed but you don't want to like <laughs> spend the time reading the wapo i guess uh, that's the washington <laughs> post um but yeah i would i would recommend the descriptions of people you get to the last one producer chris producer chris is everything you think he is that's all it says <laughs> yeah 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 i mean uh, and i love the picture they have of john oliver on there it's like old school yeah, john oliver it's when very he old school. yeah mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's been on since what was it i mean 2007 wow yeah so that's that is my recommend yeah right. 2007 mm-hmm. that sounds good yep so okay. what we have coming up i was looking at our schedule and even oh, though yeah, i even mm-hmm. asked i was like oh yeah so here's our schedule and i'm like oh shit because I think, I don't know where my numbers were coming from. So we've got coming up is Red, White, and Royal Blue. Uh, mm-hmm. That will be released on the 30th of mm-hmm. November. And sure then we'll have a guest. Lee uh-huh. will be back. Yep. Um, if you've not listened to the to the episode featuring boyfriend material, you should. You should. You should. Um, so then we have releasing on the, the 14th. This is where this gets a little tricky. So... Not that it, the guest is tricky. It's just that it's tricky with our timing here. So Window Shopping by... You Tessa know Bailey. It. Tessa Bailey comes out on the 14th, and we will mm-hmm. have a guest on that one. My mm-hmm. co-host for uh, Boobs, Blood, and... Boobs, Blood, Boobs, Boobs, and Blood. Holy shit. <laughs> um, uh, Ween will be on that episode. It is and late. And then... <laughs> we, what? I said it is late. I said it is currently late in the evening, and you and I are very tired. Yeah. Um, and then we will have, it's not listed on our, um, what we posted on Insta, but we will have a page to screen and it will be the, the hating, hating game. game. Cause we just realized that it comes out in December. It's and, the 10th. Um, I was looking at it yeah. on one of our breaks. Yeah. So we'll um, watch the hating game and that'll be our page to screen for December. That fucking shot of the, of the dream. Mm, I can't. Is- it's so hot. It's so hot. It's so... Oh, my God. He's he's wearing the suit in the dream. Anywho. Stop it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then we come back on the 28th after Christmas for the stopover by... Uh, T.L. Swan. There you go. I knew Swan was in there somewhere. Yep. Um, and then um, in January, we're going to do uh, Best Of. So that's yep. gonna, how, probably we're going to have a start. Because it's our fucking anniversary, guys. I like, know. I know. Holy shit. We were doing this a year. I oh mean, by that point, yeah. Like, right now, it's like, I don't know, 10 months or something. Yeah. 11, right? Shit, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <sighs> yeah, man. So, that's that. We're, uh, that's we'll be that. up uh, in a couple months. And so, um... How to find us? How to find us? How to find us? Um, okay, that? well, you can find us at our website at www.chicklitbookclubpodcast.com. You can check us out on Twitter at Chicklet Podcast, on TikTok, Chicklet Book Club, Pinterest. Uh, please follow us on Pinterest to see our spank naughty lists mm-hmm. and our stunt casting. Uh, Chicklet Book Club Podcast. You can email us your thoughts and constructive criticism <laughs> at Chicklet Book Club Podcast at gmail.com. Check us out on Instagram, Chicklet Book Club Podcast, YouTube. Just please follow the link. We're, I'm not going to read that. Um, we do have a Facebook, but we don't do anything with it because we don't no. like Mark Zuckerberg. Um, no. And yeah, Take we Atlanta understand. Shut up your ass, Mark. Yeah. We also understand that like Instagram is owned by the same company. We get it. Okay. Just shut up. All right. Um, we also have a Patreon. You can support <laughs> us. <laughs> After I just told you to shut up, um, you can support us on Patreon um, because, right. you know, this isn't free. No, and it costs to what? Host. Host. <laughs> I was using oh, a hard H on that one. Host. So uh, at any rate, um, we that's how you could support yeah. us, I suppose. Um, do you on hear that the note. dog? Yeah, look, on that note, <laughs> on that I note. think she's ready. And we're ready. She's like, I'm going to kill you in your sleep. Okay, so, uh, anywho, I think we are all ready. She is peeing on her blanket. Okay. (laughs) Everything is chaos. Dogs are the best, guys. Dogs are the best. (laughs) Get a dog. You guys should definitely get a dog. Mine's still alive, FYI. So, when I want to check out, he's still alive. Excellent. I'm glad to hear it. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) yep. All right. Oh, my God. She's licking it. Okay. Okay, we gotta go, guys. We gotta go. Have a wonderful (laughs) evening. 
Hey, enjoy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Have a happy Thanksgiving. If happy you syphilis day. Happy. <laughs> speaking of colonialism, happy colonialism. All right. <laughs> Veronica doesn't note. like Thanksgiving. Hope you no. enjoy it, though. No, you know, I like I like watching the fucking parade, drinking, and making turkey. Anywho, in that order, in that order. Well, actually, one could be mixed. Drinking could uh, go above parade. Yep. And we'll be drinking while watching in parade. In combination with. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. How do we say goodbye to these poor people? Oh, the most fucking annoying way possible, bitch. Ready? <laughs> uh, <gasps> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Why is it every time it's like literally just the sound of just it just bottoms out? That's what she said. <laughs>